Everybody got it. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to Pushing the Limits. Today I have Shriek Peck with me. Wonderful to have you, sir. So, so awesome to meet you. It's it's an absolute honor to meet you. I've been studying all kinds of things about you and your life, and what a remarkable career you've had and and the things you've done to help your family. Oh, I, I'm just thank you. I'm pleased and honored to be here with you. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. Now you are the inventor of something called Resimax, which we can see on your t-shirt there, Resimax. Um, and this is something that I came across in my search to help my mum and get her the next step. So yes, audience, you're going to hear more mum stories. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it brings me to new uh, techniques and new technologies and new supplements and stuff in this quest that I have. So, um, Shri, can you just tell us a little bit who you are, where you came from, and why you developed this thing called a Resimax? Absolutely. My background, I'm a physical therapist, or I guess you call them physiotherapists over there. And I've been one for 29 years now. So I've had a lot of experience in working with individuals with, with illnesses and injuries. But if you go back a little further in, in my own history, I was two years of age when I broke my neck. Oh, doctors didn't know what to do with me. I walked around with my head hunched off the side, my shoulders hunched, trying to protect myself for years until they could kind of work and straighten it out. I had a really good chiropractor that helped me. And, um, and fast forward a few years, a few years later, I broke my back as a young teenager. And then just two years after that, I was wrestling and, and uh, got caught in a bad headlock and it ruptured a vertebral artery. There's only four main arteries that go up to your brain. And I ruptured one of them and it caused blood clots through the, uh, um, through the right hemisphere of my brain, causing a left-sided paralysis, I had to learn to walk again and learn to function. And uh, since that time, as a, as a late teenager, I, I had to learn to learn again. And, and I got started doing triathlons and, and marathons. I, I've uh, never done anything crazy like what you've done, <laughs> but, but I've, uh, you know, I've, I've been on a quest to strengthen and create a healthier me. Somewhere along the way, I saw that, you know, with my severe brain injury, the statistics were against me, and I was likely to die a lot younger than the rest of the population. I, I, I don't like limits placed on me or anybody. And I mean, <laughs> and I, I, I've been working my uh, whole life and my career to try and strengthen and become the best version of myself I could be. Well, one night I was sleeping and I woke up out of a dead sleep. And uh, the question that I'd been pondering for ages is, how can I help my patients better? How can I help these chronic pain patients? How can I help these uh, children with autism? How can I help the world better? And one night I woke up with this concept about three o'clock in the morning and the concept that just kept reverberating through me was this message about vibration. And what I realized in that moment was that vibration could help heal the nervous system, but I had no idea how. And I needed to go and study and I needed to figure it out. Well, 14 years later, <laughs> I have studied all kinds of things about vibration wow. to understand that message that I received one night. And the result of it was the development of our, of our tuner and its ability to help so many people has just been something I could never even ask the universe for because wow. I didn't think I was worthy, but we've now helped, I don't know, 20,000 people or so have had our, uh, our tools throughout the world. And we're, we're climbing on that steadily. We intend wow. to help the world. Yeah. And hopefully this podcast will get it out to a few more so that they can hear about this amazing Resimax uh, uh, tuna. Now vibration, you know, when you said, you know, you, you realized you had an epiphany, basically that vibration was key to healing and to um, 
it, it, it resonated, <laughs> funnily, it resonated with me, excuse the pun, um, because I know that uh, with mum, I, I had bought a vibration plate, you know, and I had bought uh, two mm -hmm. variations, one with red light and one that you stood on. And, and I sort of intuitively knew in massage guns and all sorts of things that uh, if I could stimulate that side of the body, like her, her right side was, was paralyzed completely and the left side wasn't working that great either, but the right side was completely paralyzed, um, that that I could maybe wake it up. And uh, uh, we all know the, the wonderful healing powers of things like massage and acupuncture. And, you know, when you, when you, when you start to combine some of these things, I, I, I believe that they can be really powerful. And I'm very much an advocate of a multi-pronged approach and whatever you're trying to do, like a really holistic look uh, you know, if I'm working with a cancer client, I'm not just looking at the cancer. I'm looking at the, the whole person, how did they get here, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and vibration, it, it seems to me that it is a it is a very powerful, but I don't understand the intricacies of it. Now, this is a device. Can you explain how you got to the Resimax? And, you know, why is this different than, say, a massage gun or a you know, a, a, any other sort of vibration system. Absolutely. Well, you first need to look at, I mean, there are so many types of vibration. I like to use this analogy. A jackhammer is a massive vibration device. Not very therapeutic. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it creates all kinds of vibration, right? Um, what, what we realized was, you have an important system in the human nervous system that already has a super strong connection to vibration. It just so happens that a branch of your vagus nerve, the healing nerve that's mm. in control of everything in the body that does good, a branch of that nerve called the recurrent laryngeal branch is responsible for everything vocalized in the body. So your vocal cords that vibrate on a very specific um, frequency, depending on if you're angry and yelling or if you're moaning and sick, mm -hmm. you know, there's frequencies within the, the vocal cords that allow us to cue in to the healing properties of the central nervous system. Wow. Okay. So because it vibrates, we found that we could create a vibrational pattern that's just very gentle our device actually mimics the purring range of a cat <laughs> that's why I love they're my cat. purr <laughs> <laughs> well there's there are healing properties in the cat and it's been well researched it sp speeds up bone healing by 66 percent if you have that range of vibration right on a bone that's been fractured wow it's, you, and you know intuitively when you cuddle the cat, you feel better, right? <laughs> well, yeah. And you know what's funny? When you're not feeling very good, those cats have an innate sense that brings them to try and, and help elevate somehow. Wow. When I have a sick child, our cat comes and, and lands itself right close to them and purrs until that child is feeling better. Wow. So Tuition. not everybody <laughs> likes cats, though. <laughs> no. so we figured we better we better mechanize it and that's what we created essentially we have a small motor in here that spins that revolutionary pattern is critical many many of the vibration devices don't use that kind of mechanism they don't spin they have a, a kind of like a tap 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 effect like the, the massage guns, um, you know, a lot of the things will tap, 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 which will interrupt a pattern in the nervous system. But we found that if we created this very smooth harmonic spin, essentially we could purr to the nervous system mm -hmm. and not have to worry about kitty litter. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, and it's, it's got like four different algorithms in it. And yeah, and in different speeds and different. Right. It actually has 20 levels mm -hmm. and four algorithms, four in a strong setting and four in a gentle setting. These algorithms take the 10 levels of the uh, base range of the device 
and cut it down into about 3,000 energy points. Here's where we get real scientific. We take mm -hmm. those points and we mathematically put them into waveforms that are much like songs. If you repeatedly send those patterns back into the nervous system, the brain learns the pattern and starts to be able to function better because of it. Wow. Essentially, we're creating new neural pathways that if you'll help it with the nutrition and you'll help it with oxygen and everything else that's very important, the brain will respond by rebuilding and redesigning the human Wow. Okay. So obviously, uh, let's dive into a little bit um, mum's story. And she she has had a stroke and an aneurysm. She was paralyzed on the right side. She's also had brain cancer. She's also had multiple concussions from falling over because she's more prone to falls. Uh, <clears throat> so her brain's had one hell of a life for the last eight years. <laughs> and that's an absolute miracle, except it wasn't a miracle. It was bloody hard work. And lots of technologies and lots of brilliant people showing me their their, their ways forward. <clears throat> Everyone from functional neurologists to hyperbaric and now Resi Max. Um, it, it's but she's still got deficits on that right side where her shoulder comes forward. There's spasticity in her right hand. It inhibits her walking properly. She can walk, you know, but she's not walking left, right, left, right, uh, with the right hand stiffening up, and. Um, she's very sensitive on the right side of the body. So I've been using the Resimax and scraping because you can go along this, with the side of this device and we'll have some links down below to videos and things like that that you can watch um, Sharik actually doing it. Um, but you scrape along the side of her leg with this, the side of the Resimax and it, you know, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. And I'm like, do I persevere with that, uh, Shariq? Why, why does she not like it? Um, and what's happening there in her brain? So um, she has a condition that you would call peripheral neuropathy related to the stroke, related to the brain injuries and, the, uh, and possibly the cancers as well. And the neuropathy just means that normally we have millions of phone lines that go all the way down to the toes. Well, we had blowout somewhere in the brain, brain stem, somewhere in that area that caused it so that many of the phone lines are down, which means we get very poor communication all the way back up to the brain on what is happening down there. Well, the brain is trying to understand what's happening. It doesn't get the full picture from all the messages coming up. Her balance centers are not getting the full picture. Her eyes are saying, I'm moving, but her foot is saying, well, I'm not sure if I'm moving. And mm -hmm. so all of this disconnect causes the brain to not get a clear picture. What we see in people is that because of that, the brain starts kind of shutting off the rest of the communication in the area. And it becomes painful as it becomes stiff, as it becomes unused. Um, the body, if you will get it working again and get it fully moving again, the pain will go away. The pain is a product of poor communication between the brain and the extremities. And once we get that all changed, um, she, she won't remember the pain. So it's well worth it. If we can wake up the communication and suddenly her brain starts sensing every part and piece of her, especially down that right side, and starts coordinating it with the left side of her, the, the pain will go away and the functional um, levels, you'll start seeing her gait patterns improve. You'll see her posturing of her shoulder relax and start moving freely. She has to sense her body and feel it before she can get it to move correctly, before yeah. the muscles will start working correctly. So that is a bit of a painful, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not like um, shoot me, put me in the hospital kind of pain. It's <laughs> like, oh, that is very uncomfortable. Yeah. But so the neat thing about it, the, the pain is gone within minutes of you doing the treatment. So it's have you noticed that with her? Well, <clears throat> I haven't been able to get her to do it long enough. 
you know, and this is what I wanted to ask you, how long do I need to scrape her legs? How often do I need to do that? Should I be doing it every time before I take her walking and training so that I'm activating it? Like I, last uh, last week I took it to the gym and every time in between the sets, I'd be scraping up and down on her leg, just very briefly, like 30 seconds or something, just to reactivate, reactivate, reactivate. And I don't know if I'm doing it right, okay? <laughs> so I is think that you're the sort doing of thing? <laughs> it is, it is, but maybe you need to back off just a little bit. You can turn the device on, turn it as high as you can because that jams more signals. Mm -hmm. You might just use the 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 flat surface of it uh -huh. to to wake up the communications do that for just a little bit until it's not so sensitive and then just to scrape a time or two so that her brain says oh yes i remember exactly where those parts and pieces are but you're waking it up anytime you've got that in connection with her the other thing that you might do is take the little extremity strap yep and, and, and strap it to her while she's performing the activity and say, hey, today, instead of scraping it a lot, we're going to attach this to you and let it send lots of information to the brain that helps the brain remember those pathway, pathways and rewire the communication to that area. Yeah, she's. I, I tried that. Uh, I've only tried that once, to be fair, and it, it, you know, fell off a couple of times, and then we sort of gave up on it. So I need to to try that again. Um, I wasn't probably strapping it correctly. Uh, what, what I found in the couple of times that we used it was that when she's walking with it, it's it, 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 it's um, sort of causing her to be not focused. You know, like mm -hmm. she's losing, mm -hmm. um, she's like aggravated that she's some, there's something down there. So um, is that a good sign or a bad sign? You know, like it, well, she's got very limited, like any, any, like if we're walking along and a dog comes running up or something, she'll lose it completely. Like her focus goes mm -hmm. and I have to stop her, reset her, start again, that type of thing. Um, so is that you know, going to disrupt your focus if I keep it on there while we're actually doing the training or should I push through that? That's a great question. Let me back up by um, talking through what exactly is happening. When you say she loses focus, it means that she has a very narrow bandwidth. She's not flexible enough in her neurologic system to be able to handle more. So what we do is small doses of it. So for example, strap it on and say for one minute, this is how we're gonna do it. Then we'll take this off and let your brain pay more attention to it or we'll strap it onto your waist in the fanny pack, the runner's pack, mm -hmm. and we'll orient it on that right side. So the brain is paying more attention mm -hmm. to everything coming through that right side. And we want her to get distracted. Uh huh. Gotcha. We want her brain trying to figure out what is that message coming to me so that it can organize itself. It will say, okay, I can sense that, that sensation down in my leg. That is distracting. But it starts picking up the information from that. And when we go through a sleep cycle, it's actually 24 hours after the exercise, that her brain has made sense of what you just did. Yep. So small little bursts of that will help her brain organize itself related to those deficient areas down in that right leg and right side of her. Wow. Because it's like you've got a map in your brain, isn't it? Like your brain sort of has a map of the body where it is in space. And people who have never had a stroke or never had any brain injuries just don't get it like we don't understand like I can't put myself in her shoes I can imagine because I've been working here for a long time and I studied this quite a lot but it, there's a there's a sort of a map and I know they've done experiments where they've taped two fingers together for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden when you take the tape off the, the you can't move them independently those fingers because the brain has wired it together and so that we we have this complex sort of knowing of where we are in space that was completely broken with her or mm -hmm. badly badly damaged at least and so she doesn't realize when she's leaning to the right or she's 
uh, her, her shoulders coming forward or the asbestos sitting in her hand. And I have to, and this is a really tough when you've been doing it for nearly eight years, <laughs> every day, every, every, every 10 seconds when I'm trying to coach her to walk correctly, you know, swing those arms, get that chest out bright, you know, you're, you're tipped over, you're tipping to the fore, you know, like over and over ad nauseum. And, um, you know, sometimes if people listen to me talking to mum, they must be like, my God, what a horrible woman, you know. <laughs> She's so impatient. I'm like, but it's really hard <laughs> after eight years of saying the same thing for you know, like over and over, thousands and thousands of times. Um, but her brain just doesn't learn it. And yet she's normal intelligence. Mm -hmm. Like you sitting here talking to her, you would not know she's got anything, right? Um, it, but you, but when it comes to learning those physical movements, it's just just mind blowingly difficult uh, to to actually memorize so that pattern, those patterns that she needs to do. <laughs> so that's one of the fascinating things about adding in the vibration through the movements. Uh -huh. It helps the brain map out the body better. Yep. Yep. You're right. There's a there's a what we call a sensory motor cortex just above your ear on both sides, and it controls the majority of movements in the body and senses them. It's a, a big word we call proprioception. Yeah. Is the body's ability to know where all parts and pieces are at all times in all places. And that's a very, very important scanning mechanism that the body has going all the time so that it helps us be upright and, and function through our world. Well, if that sensory motor cortex has had some damage through here and the proprioception and the cerebellum and all of these systems are not quite fully coordinated, we have chaos in our own little universe. But the more information you send up the faster the brain can learn that proper patterning so let's say it's getting you know 20 points of contact every time you take a step well when you add vibration into that step it sends messages through every one of the joint receptors through the golgi tendon organs through all of these little communicators that are sending messages up to the brain to help it make sense of where it is. So for some of our worst difficult cases, we'll put this on them, strap it on them, put it however, and it might be on them for a couple of hours a day just as they go through normal movements to help the brain make better sense of its connections with the earth. Wow. Okay, this is exciting because I just need to push through a little bit harder and like just having this conversation is helping me understand how to apply it and how to use it. And when you you, you first get something, you're a little bit tentative, you know. I'm, I'm also studying QRI lasers at the moment and I'm like, oh, I could do something wrong. <laughs> I don't know how to do it quite, quite right. So you, it takes time to sort of become familiar with these things yourself as when you as a as a you know the therapist if you like trying to trying to work with this um so that's given me more confidence to to go a little bit harder and push push her through a little bit of pain to um get to the other side where hopefully her body will start and I, if i can get her to walk normally or more normally i tell you i would be singing this from the rooftops because i've been doing this for seven and a half years day in, day out, day in, day out. And the physios have always said to me, you'll get so far and that'll be it. And I, as you said before, I don't like people putting limitations on me. So I've been going, no, I'm going to show you, I can, I can. <laughs> and, and today they've been correct uh, up to a certain point. I've, I've taken away beyond what any of them ever believed was possible, but we've still got some problems here, you know. Uh, so if I can get her to do this, so I will report back in six months time or something when she's, you know, had a chance to integrate some of this into her properly. And then, and, and, and I, I love that combination of things and trying things in a, in a different way. So that's, that's really, really powerful. Um, so people who've had strokes, people who've had concussions, people who've got, so children with autism, mm -hmm. I, does it help with autism, with kids with autism? It sure does. You know, they're much like your mother 
in the fact that they don't sense and feel their body completely or correctly because the connections in their brain have not developed correctly. With a lot of our, our children and, and adults with autism, they're, they're extremely well developed in parts of their brain and not so developed in others. Well, if you will talk to somebody with autism and, and they will try to describe, you know, they don't feel like they're in control of their body either because their brain, because of these disconnections, they don't fully sense and feel the world, which creates that chaos as they try and interact with the world. And so you'll see that their coordination oftentimes is not very good. It's because the connections are, are not all working right, or their gait is off, or they didn't walk normally, they, they, didn't, they missed the crawling stage, or you know, a lot of things go into the brain development. What you're doing with your mother is literally starting at the brainstem level and trying to get cross-body coordination. Yes. You're building up her, her, her brain that is dysfunctional somewhere in the center there. You're building that up so that everything can start communicating. When we do that with a child, we see a lot of the signs of autism start to fade away. They start to have better eye contact. They start to have less robotic communication. They start to, to be able to coordinate better. But it's, it's much the same as you're rebuilding the brain and central nervous system for your mother. This can be done for a child or an adult with, uh, with autism as well. That's amazing. And, and, and left-right brain connection, I watched one of your videos and you were talking about that, that it's so important to get this left-right brain thing going in that corpus callosum that we talked about briefly that mum's got damage in the corpus callosum so by doing things on both sides of the body would be beneficial or concentrating more on the right side that has got more damage so the way that I do this because I noticed when I had my own stroke I was severely affected on the left side but I also had some deficits on the right side and so I suggest in the scraping process, in the waking up of the connections from the brain to the body, we will spend about two thirds of the time on the side that's most affected mm -hmm. and one third of the time on the other side, right, because okay. you do, you need both sides to be communicating. And if we only did the right side, the, the left side or the right brain never has a full understanding of what it should feel like. And so we take the side that's stronger and we say, this is what it should feel like. And then we do it on the other side and, oh, that's a little painful. And, oh, that doesn't feel right. But the brain says, wait a minute, that's a right hand and that's a left hand. They should feel the same. Yeah. The brain starts putting the pieces together and helping normalize right and left sides because of the sensory input and the messaging that you're providing. So gotcha. sometimes having both hands on the device uh -huh. is really helpful for the brain, especially at the corpus callosum, to uh -huh. start making better sense and better right-left connections. So spend more time on the weak side, but do both sides to make sure that they're communicating correctly and normalizing the sensation from one side to another. Right, and, and for those who are on the podcast and can't see, Ms. is holding up the actual, uh, the, the, the Resimax Pro Tuner, what do you call it? Um, the, it's yeah. the Resimax Tuner Pro. Tuner Pro. It's tuning, <laughs> tuning the vagus nerve. Tuning the vagus nerve. And you've got this device on top that plugs onto it, um, sort of like blue wings, for the want of a better description and again hit the video links down below that we'll put to your website um, to show how this is and we can do different things with those can't we so um, what I've been using it for because I have a very stressful life and a, and a nervous system that's completely shot after the last eight years of hell um, that I've been through um, is at night time um, and I'm getting wonderful sleep. Um, I'm using it to stimulate that vagus nerve and to get that parasympathetic uh, drive going in the, in the evening as I'm powering down after a long day. 
Uh, and I'm finding it wonderful just, you know, going up and down on the, on the top of my head. I'm using it on the back of my neck. I'm putting it on these trigeminal nerves here on the side. Um, I've, I've been experimenting and I might be doing it wrong, but um, under here, I like it. Um, is, that, is, that oh, yeah. a, is that a place? <laughs> That's a beautiful place. Under if the you chin? think about it. Yep. Because these openers of the jaw are opposite of the clenchers. The yes. clenchers are very tied into the fight or flight stress response, but these are openers down here. And so they help relax the jaw and the trigeminal nerve. And when the trigeminal nerve is relaxed, the vagus nerve functions better, which allows you to sleep better. But right in this area where your vocal cords are, a branch of the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve controls the uh, your thyroid and your parathyroid and your yeah. thymus gland. And so... Oh. Just having contact in that whole area. This is my wife's favorite go to sleep position right here. <laughs> you have to watch this on, uh, <laughs> on YouTube if you want to see. <laughs> but it's uh, it's a beautiful way to get into that whole area. And I'm finding it gold. My sleep scores have been like between 95 and 100 since I've been using it. So, um, and, you know, I've, I've been tweaking my sleep for a long time and I've got it up to a really good level because I used to have terrible insomnia but I've really got it things dialed in but it's just taken me that extra notch up the last the last couple of weeks so you know thanks for that <laughs> really appreciate the good sleep there. extra benefit oh huge because you know we know what a leverage sleep is you know like if I'm getting a, a, a extra deep sleep uh, then I'm getting more growth hormone. It's anti-aging. It's just helping me regulate my emotions. It's it's just you know, ask my family. I'm a better person if I've been using this. <laughs> so so there, there's and in the vagus nerve is one of my favorite topics to talk on because the vagus the for those who don't understand the vagus nerve and not that I'm an expert on the vagus nerve but it's basically the biggest nerve in the body and it connects everything in the brain it goes down into many of the organs it's it's sort of the the end point for the organ so when you're in a fight or flight state the vagus nerve puts you into a sympathetic nervous system state from how I understand it and then you've got that fight or flight response you've got reduced blood supply to the stomach and the immune system and your frontal cortex uh, prefrontal cortex uh, your executive functioning isn't quite as good you've got a bit more tunnel vision and if you're in that state all day every day which a lot of us are because we're just like oh my god I've got to get that done I've got to get that done I've got to pay the bills I've got oh my god there's traffic everywhere and there's just thousands of things coming at us now uh, that our ancient DNA is not really used to dealing with. And so we're in this sympathetic state for way too long for many of us. And if you've had a stressful life like I've had, you've got, um, you know, HPA axis, you know, exhaustion for the want of a better term uh, and your cortisol and things are not going it's really really important to focus on that parasympathetic nervous system so anything that drives parasympathetic state i'm into like i want to know <laughs> if anything that can take me out of that fight or flight state um uh, especially you know because i do genetics and i know that i have predisposition to a heck of a lot of uh, adrenaline and um dopamine like chasing dopamine and um you know just have that very stressed out sort of uh, baseline state anyway uh, so anything that can help me calm down is is very very welcome so this is a, a fab fabulous tool for that as well it's absolutely I mean it is the best tool for getting the adrenal glands to calm down the adrenaline and the cortisol are opposites of vagus nerve function in fact there's a reason that your adrenal glands are one of the only organs in the body that the vagus nerve does not go to it's because they're opposites wow. that's part of that that whole hpa axis and the balance thing well if you can improve function of the vagus nerve all the way down to your midsection then you put those adrenal glands to a point where they can start functioning well your cortisol levels start uh, functioning more normalized your uh, glucocorticoids, everything starts functioning better when you enhance the functioning of the vagus nerve. So we do a lot to, to get that ready so that the rest of the body can recover. Yeah, this, this is a, such, such an important topic. So not only is this going to be good for people with brain injuries and 
concussions and strokes and autism and I dare say cerebral palsy and things like that could be benefited perhaps um, but also for people that are dealing with too much stress cortisol problems uh, adrenal you know um, HPA axis dysfunction all of that sort of thing which is really then tied into you know things like autoimmune diseases and um, so th this is a far-reaching consequences I mean this little device uh, not a pharmaceutical no downsides to it um, the hell of a lot of upsides to it I'm quite excited a bit to, to to understand it better and to to utilize it in a more appropriate fashion than I've probably been doing and to maybe get the best out of it because when you first get it you're like oh uh, okay it shakes <laughs> it vibrates great uh what do i do with this <laughs> and you must have spent like a long time working out all these points and how to use it and how to you know working with people uh and you've got a lot of physiotherapists and people chiropractors and cranial uh people that, that work on the cranial um system using the resimax in the clinic mm -hmm. how what sort of feedback have you got from from people Incredible feedback. Um, I, 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 I get emails every single day from doctors and from uh, patients talking about what it has done. I got an email this morning from a, a woman who has a nonverbal autistic son that's in his 20s. And uh, she's been using the device now for about um, six months. And she said it has regulated sleep cycles. It has decreased his seizure activity. It's wow. even stopped seizures that were starting. Um, she says it's just been remarkable. Her son uh, does not communicate verbally, but he types. And he has typed out that it has been one of the, the best tools for helping him sense and feel his body and what he needs to do to be able to, uh, to get his brain and nervous system functioning better. He can feel it wow. because he feels more clear. But I get messages like that every day from from people that it's it's helped change their lives and and I just I love that. So it's my yeah. mission. Yeah, it's it is my your mission, mission to share it. <laughs> yeah, it is your mission. And you are you maybe you know like I when 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 horrible things happen to you like like happened to you when you were seventeen and even when you were two, um, you know that these things have happened to us for a reason and we can either be broken by that. Or we can find out what was I meant to learn from this and turn it into a positive story as best you can. And I'm very big like that. Um, so with mum, when we had that horrible stroke and that I wrote a book called Relentless and was to empower people to not give up when you're told there's no hope and to fight for what you need in the system because you have to understand that you know there's certain limitations within the system so you better go looking outside the box you better start to research yourself because nobody is across all the 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 wonderful research that's been done now like no single doctor has got a chance in hell of knowing all the amazing things that are out there and so you've got to go and dig through all the chafe and find the the gems that are out there for you in your particular problem and i can guarantee yes. there's somebody on the planet who's overcome the thing that you are trying to overcome and that's something that i've been really you know and i've, I've been accused by the, the head of the medical council said to me once you're giving people false hope you know this book that you've written this is an amazing story but you're giving people false hope and i'm like you gave us no hope you took away all hope that's what I was told and you were wrong and I'm not giving people false I'm not saying it's going to be easy and I'm not saying that everyone's going to succeed what I'm saying is that you have to go hard and find out if there is a way forward for you and not just take the the first negative diagnosis as being the end game you know because when you do that you take when you take away people's hope you take away their chance of recovery that's my yeah. argument, you know. No, you're absolutely right. I have a very good friend who uh, who says you should never accept a limitation. If somebody tells you you've only got three months to live, you buy into that and you're going to be gone in two and a half months. 
But if you don't accept that limitation, you're going to find a way to heal. And, and it has been proven over and over and over again. And, and so that is what we must do. We must give hope. I, I watched a wonderful uh, TED Talk of a, a brilliant doctor who said, what is the power of the placebo? Yes. It's, exactly. not, it's not the power that, that it can fake somebody out. The power of the placebo is that if you believe that you can, you most likely can. When you believe your body sets up everything in it to start healing, to start improving, but it starts with belief. It starts with faith. And, and unfortunately, many of our systems in, in, our, in our crazy medical world, we don't give hope. Hope should be our number one prescription because I, then we can yep. work towards it. Yep, I, I agree. And I work a lot of people in my clinic where, you know, I'm just showing them the way and empowering them to fight. And I'm not saying we're not going to lose, you know, I lost my dad two and a half years ago. I fought like a mad woman to save his life. I, you know, I was trying to get intravenous vitamin C and my, my listeners have heard about the story. He had sepsis in the ICU. I was unable to take him out and mm. do what I wanted to needed to do because he would have just died if we'd taken the ventilation out and so on and so forth. Uh, so I know what it is to lose. I know I, I, I've lost a baby. I've, I know what it is to lose. However, I know even in those, that horrible situation with my father, especially, uh, I, I, I threw the bus at it. And I, and I gave it absolutely everything. And he knows that I gave it everything. He knows that I did my best. That alone is worth it. You know what At I mean? At the end of the day, doing your very best is what it's about. It's not all the wins. It's about feeling and knowing that you did your very best because you can find peace in that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if the system had been different, we may have saved his life. And, and you know, that's in a part of my mission in this life um, to, to get some law changes. But that's, you know, um, going to be a bigger, <laughs> bigger mission, I'm afraid. Um, but I'm passionate about not giving up, you know, like people when they're a little bit older, they're sort of, well, you've had your lot. <laughs> they don't say it in so many words, but that's exactly what they're meaning. Uh, and I just don't think that that's, uh, that's the way we should be viewing life. We've got one shot here and every single day is precious. And we need to, to, to work on improving that, that lot that we've got. Uh, and finding devices like Resimax is just like, ah, here's the next thing that I can try for mum. You know, here's the next thing I can try for myself, you know. Uh, and, and isn't this exciting? And that's what just floats my boat so some um you know big thanks to dr elizabeth harris who put me in contact with you and uh, showed me this device because i went to her saying you know what else can i do what else is there for mum and we're seven years in and there's still problems uh what's next and she's of course a neurofeedback and um brilliant doctor she's coming on the show shortly uh but it's just you know somebody knows somebody who knows somebody <laughs> and sometimes that's the way the universe works to bring you some amazing things and so i'm really really excited about, about the resi max what um Shereen, what what what's what's next for you and then the development of this this product it's just it's just been number of iterations i believe as you've tried to perfect the engineering of this hmm. um yeah You'll be excited to know that our next one is a miniature. Oh. And um, it's app driven. Oh, and okay. It'll, it'll be out uh, later this summer in 2023. We're uh, bringing that out. It's going to uh, have some really neat features, including some timers on certain algorithms and patterns and uh, fit very nicely in all kinds of little packs. But this little uh, little device is uh, is undergoing strenuous uh, testing and development right now, wow. and um, we can't wait to share it because it's going to have some neat things. Once it 
once this technology gets perfected, we're going to take the same technology and redesign and rebuild it into our uh, existing uh, Tuner Pro devices and, and be able to get the communication happening in the brain even faster, even faster, because we've got to be able to help more people in the world. So those are a couple yep. of things we've been working on. No, brilliant. That's absolutely exciting. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to trying that one out too then. You know, because this is like brain brain injuries are, are on the rise. Neurodegeneration is on the rise. Um, you know, we've got our athletes, our, our sports people who are having brain injury after brain injury. We've got strokes. We've got uh, aneurysms. We've got, you know, um, birth trauma. We've got you know, neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's. I've got Dr. Dale Bredesen coming on the show next week, which I'm super excited about to share about mm -hmm. the latest in, in Alzheimer's uh, work. You know, all of these areas of brain rehabilitation are just so just we need to be doing things to help people, you know, and I think it's a, it's a combination of uh, things like hyperbaric, things like Resimax, things like supplementation, the correct diet for brains and brain rehab, you know, all of these aspects, functional neurology, I've got a functional neurologist coming on shortly, uh, all of these things that are going to help us get the best out of our brain, you know, um, because our brain is, 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 is command central, you know, <laughs> we're not going to have a good life, you can't, you know, like, I, I get frustrated when I'm working with someone and they're going, oh, I can't afford to do this, that or the other thing, but to drive out in a flash car and I'm going, your brain is just, sell the car, get the get the rehab stuff for your brain because you won't be driving that car if you don't fix that brain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you won't be doing anything if you have a brain that's not functioning properly. Like get your priorities right, I feel like saying to some people. <laughs> You and I are teammates on the same team. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And and preventing. Like when you've, I think when you've been and seen or you've you've lived it yourself and mum's lived it and I've seen it, you've seen the devastation of what your life can look like when your brain is not functioning properly. There is nothing more high priority than that. Nothing. Well, nothing else works unless the nervous system and the brain are online and functioning well. Yep, yep. This is this is definitely a passion area. Sharika, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Any other experiences before we wrap it up? And you know, and to honor your time, um, you, where can people find you? How can they get hold of of one of these devices? I'm sure we can talk to your team and get get something set up. Um, but uh, yeah, just tell us where they can find you and, and all the good content. You know, um, my friends, my Kiwi friends over in uh, New Zealand, can uh, they can reach out to me via email. Mm -hmm. It's Sherrick, S-H-A-R-I-K at Rezimax, R-E-Z-Z-I-M-A-X dot com. They can find our website at uh, www.resimax.com. We're on all the social media channels on uh, our YouTube library. I think it's over 150 videos on all kinds of techniques, um, patient experiences. There's just so many things that we have tried to do to put it out there to help the world as easy as we can with the knowledge that we've gained. We just don't want to we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to no. share it. <laughs> it feels like shareware and um, and they can reach out in all kinds of uh, ways. We have a distributor there in New Zealand that's been using the products for several years, had a massive brain injury herself several years ago. And um, it's just nice to be able to, to help people in New Zealand, Australia. I've been over to Australia a couple of times. But next time I get to your part of the world, I want to come to New Zealand. So yes, that's my next come stop. Us. <laughs> come and see us. Now that would be absolutely fabulous. So we'll put all those links in the in the in the show notes for people, so that they can reach out. So anyone uh, wants to either contact me or Sharik, we can we can organize uh, you getting one of these devices and trying it out. Thank you so much for your time today and thank you so much for your passion. I'm very glad that you had those injuries early on because otherwise we wouldn't have um, your passion behind this uh, 
this these products and what they can do. So thanks very much, Shreek. You're welcome. <laughs>